Hello, I'm Dr. Julie Mayer. I'm here to talk about warming up and cooling down our athlete prior to events. That would be agility events, being in the backyard, going around hiking. It's very important that we warm our tissues up and we cool them down after our athletic event. So we're going to go in and talk about warm up, cool down, and I'm going to give you a demonstration on how to do some passive range of motion and active range of motion and I'll explain the definition of those two. And this stuff is very very important to prevent injury and to improve the performance of your pet. So warm up, what does that mean? Well like I said we want to increase circulation to the tissue. We do want to physically warm them up because warming up the tissues will make them more extensible which means flexible range of motion. So we don't want to be stiff when we're climbing a tree in the backyard, or if we're doing fly ball, or agility, dock diving, etc. Okay? So, we're going to do some passive range of motion with our pet. Passive range of motion means that you are doing the work. Yes, we have to do a little bit of work, and that's okay, because they're doing all the work for us out there, right? So, passive range of motion means that we, the handler, we're doing the work. Active range of motion, which is the A-R-O-M, that is the pet is doing the work, but we're giving them commands. We're helping them to move, okay? So, I'm going to demo those in just one minute, but I really want to talk about the importance of why we need warm-up and cool-down. The joint. You need, the only way to get nutrition to the joint, to get blood supply to the joint, is by moving it. So there's no good blood supply to these joints. It's all about pumping good stuff in and pumping good stuff out. So we want to make sure that the joints are moving to the fullest when these pets are performing. The muscle. You never want to run on a, a cold muscle. The muscle, you can get tears, you can get microtraumas, you can get a lot of syndromes. For example, you may have heard of the iliopsoas muscle. It's, it's a muscle that is very much abused and it does it gets mad at us okay and there's a lot a lot of injuries that can happen with muscles so we want them to be warm it makes them more extensible it makes them flex extend better and they they're less prone to having injuries the nerves we need the nervous system to be very warmed up if you will we want them to be alert. We want the reflexes to be better. You want proprioception, which means knowing where your legs are in space. And especially in agility, their legs are <laughs> always in space. So we want them to have better, faster reflexes so they can turn those corners quicker. They can hop on the equipment going 100 miles an hour and control themselves. We need to turn the nervous system on. Hormones. Now, who knew? Who knew even hormones have anything to do in play with our athletes or again just your backyard dog. Hormones are very important for the athlete. Uh, cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone that our adrenal gland secretes and it's very important because it's very dynamic. It controls your blood sugar levels, it controls the stress you know that uh, a lot of these athletes they, they pick up stress because they're working hard, there's a lot of noise and activity and excitement going on, so the cortisol has to be ready and it has to be there for the body. So it helps us regulate stress. Also insulin. Insulin is very important and insulin plays a role in the athlete's abilities uh, to perform good because it helps our sugar level. Okay, Insulin makes our sugar go into the muscle tissue. So insulin is very important too. So hormones, gotta, you know, we got to get the body going. We have to get all these organ systems working hard so you can have that dog take off like a bullet. Okay. So really important point right here is you can't just do your warm-up two hours before your run. You have to do your warm-up within 10 minutes for it to be able to assist and help the body. Okay. So now we're going to do a demonstration with our buddy, Joe. You ready, buddy? All right, so now we're going to demonstrate passive range of motion. And remember, passive range of motion means that you, the handler, are doing all the work and he's just enjoying the ride. 
You can start at any end of the dog. Basically what we're going to do is we want to move all four limbs through a full range of motion. So I'm going to demonstrate that now. I usually get down on the floor with the dog. You could stand however little dogs you can put on a table. However you need to do this for your own safety and your back as well. Okay, Joe, you ready? Okay. And what I do, this is flexion. Shoulder, elbow, and his little wrist are all in flexion. And I push the uh, elbow with my right hand. And that's going to put this leg in a complete extension. Flexion, extension. Very smooth. Flexion, extension. Now I could pick up if he's resisting any of those motions. Okay, but he's beautiful, Joe. Beautiful. All right, so then I go to the back leg since I'm on the side. And I'm going to put the leg in a flexion. Extension by pushing the knee. Flexion. Extension. You got it, Joe. Stay with me, buddy. Yeah. Flexion and extension. Good boy. So that's very normal. It's very fluid. I usually do three reps. Then you go to the, you can just turn them around, move your body, make it flow. It's a dance and it's very comfortable. You can detect any problems if he's in pain, guarding, things like that. But this is a great passive range of motion warm up. So now we're going to do active range of motion, and again, the definition of active range of motion means that he's doing the action, you're just giving him the help and the command, okay? You ready? So we're going to give you a series of active range of motion moves that you could do to help warm up and then cool down. You ready, buddy? Okay, sit pretty. This is good for core strength. Yes. And his back. Okay, let's go left. Yes. Can you go right? Oh, that was a lucky go right. Yes, good boy. Yay! Yeah, right here. And here, good boy. Good figure eights. Yes, good figure eights. Good boy. Nice flexibility of your spine. Yes, good boy. Yay! You dancing? All right, hugs. Yes. Come here, hugs. Yeah, good boy. <laughs> good boy. You're crazy. Come here. Hugs, hugs, good boy. Yeah, crawl. Yes, crawl. Good boy, good boy, good job. Yes, back up, Joe. Back up, back up. Yes. Let's try that again. Back up, Joe. Back up. Yeah, good boy. All right. Want to do some active range of motion? Touch. Good boy. Ready? Yeah, good job. One. Yeah, two. A half? Good boy. This one? Yeah, just don't give them all. Come on. Yeah, good boy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ready? Stretch your neck. Good boy. Good boy. There you go. Up to the ceiling. Yes. Good job. And down. Good boy. That was good. All right. So now that your pet has run the race uh, and won the race, ran the race, won the race, and they're ready to take them back to their resting place, we have to cool them down, which is just as important as warming up. And it's kind of the same thing, but a little bit in reverse. So what we're going to do is you want to trot them off the field a little bit and then go to a, a fast walk, get back to your tent and your crates or, or your resting spot. And we want to try to you know slow things down, slow metabolism down, slow the heart rate. Um, but definitely we want to do our passive range of motion again, all right? So once you get back, again, a light trot, trot them around a little bit, get to a fast walk, then a slower walk, get to your resting place, and now pay attention and do your passive range of motion. So you're going to, just like we demoed before, you're going to do the same thing. And what's really important about the passive range of motion after the event is you can detect things. Are they tighter? You know, you knew what he, how your pet was before going in the ring, and now you should feel them when they come out. So, are they, you know, are they tight? Is there heat? Is there soreness? Do they all of a sudden go like that when you touch them, and they didn't before? So, it's really diagnostic. You can, you can feel a lot of differences from before and after. So, you're doing an exam on your pet, and it's great because you can make notations, and then you can come and see your holistic veterinarian who also does chiropractic would be ideal. 
So, very important to do that passive range of motion when you get back to your resting spot. And do some active range of motion. And basically, again, that's trotting off the field. Maybe have them do some of those twists and turns and uh, sits and downs to make sure their transitions and all of those exercises that you did before look the same as when you got done with the run. But it also can help them cool down. You take it down a notch and you just keep going slower and slower until you get a resting um, heart rate and a resting respiratory rate. So heart rate needs to decrease. Temperature. Uh, we test a lot of greyhounds after they sprint. Um, we do rectal thermometers and they, their body temperatures can go up to 106 and 108. In Arizona, that's pretty tough on the dogs. Their temperature normal should be 101 to 102 and a half. But when they're working out, that you know the muscles are working hard. The metabolism creates a lot of heat. We have to cool them down, folks. So you have all your cool coats and misting and things like that. But you got to be careful with those because if you cool them off too quickly, <laughs> the muscles can spasm. Okay. So what we want to do everything gradually. Get them back in the shade. Um, I don't like to give them a lot of water very, you know, quickly. We don't want blow. We don't want them throwing up, things like that. Just a little sips here and there, okay? Let that core body temperature relax, uh, get, get to a normal level if you can. Muscle metabolism, very, very important. That's why we're doing trotting, walking, then get to a resting spot. We need to have the body get rid of the byproducts of metabolism, and one of those that's very common you all know about is lactic acid, okay? We don't want that building up in the tissues. Hormones. We talked about hormones in the beginning. Who knew, right? Uh, your insulin levels, everything's got to get back to normal. doesn't take, it's not two seconds. You've got to rest the body. Okay, so your cortisol has to drop, and your insulin has to drop, and your blood sugar and everything has to go back to normal. If you find hot spots, this is the time to ice. So if you feel any heat on your dog, you know how they were before the run, now you're going to feel if there's a difference, get some ice. And ice is your friend, and you want to keep ice on there for about 10 minutes, okay? So you had your warm-up, your cool-down, you did before, after, and now we can see if there's a difference, but we really want to help our pet to rest and get ready for the, for the next event. Do not work the body on cold muscles. That's when you're going to do some harm, and there's going to be an injury, and you won't have a long, good, healthy career with your pet. So here we are. Everybody's relaxed. We had a long day at our classes. We had a long day at the trial. <laughs> you look so relaxed, Joe. So what I like to do is just get them relaxed, get your little buddy relaxed, scan them. Just take your, you know, take your hands all over them. Look at their toes. Don't forget about their toes. Toes are very important. I like to just wiggle their toes, tickle them a little bit. And it's just a nice superficial rub down. I'm not doing any serious massage, but it just feels good. You can feel their joints. Is there any sore spots, any heat? It also cools them down, relaxes them, and, uh, you know, they get ready to just take a nice long nap and, and be able to rest and get ready for the next day of, uh, of trials and training. So it's good. It's a lot of fun. You bond with your pet. They really like it. Uh, they feel then trusting, more comfortable with you. And uh, once again, these um, exams, if you will, and massages and just touching can definitely be diagnostic. So you can pick up a lot of things, you know, trigger points, heat, uh, any sensitivities. Try to, you know, get to the toes. Like I said, we all have to pay attention because these are their shoes. So we want to make sure that their shoes are okay. So have fun, be safe, but we have to also remember that we have to, you know, make sure that our athletes are safe too. Yay! Do you like that, Joe? Oh, that's so good.